I'm leaving. No, no, no. I'm I'm happy to stay. I'm not going anywhere. No, no, no. I, I really want out. That's what the past couple of months has felt like following Dan Houston. But the multi-time All-Australian Port Adelaide rebounding star, well, he's out of Alberton. He now is a Collingwood magpie in 2025. One of the biggest names, if not the biggest names, has officially moved clubs this 2024 free agency and AFL trade period. And on this episode, we're going to look at what it means for the pies, the big significant loss, regardless of the pieces they've got back. How big of a loss could this be for Port Adelaide? How do they replace him? And for fantasy coaches, super coach, dream team, AFL fantasy and keeper, He's been a relevant player for a number of years. Does that stay, maintain, or decrease in 2025? We'll talk about all of that on this episode as we review the trade movement of Dan Houston to Collingwood. It's MJ from the Coaches Panel. I hope you're well, and I do hope you've enjoyed this series so far. If you have and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like the video. And as an audio podcast, give us a five-star rating. Dan Houston's one of these guys that, If you're politely outside of South Australia, you just don't realize how good of a player this is unless you deeply follow the AFL. And that happens politely across all states, not just a Vic media bias, but politely, unless you're A-grade elite. Even if you're very, very good, which Dan is, and you could argue Dan is A-grade elite, and I hear that argument quite happily, unless you're the Bontempelli types the Crips types, the winning Brownlow types, outside of your home state or the club you support, you just don't realise sometimes just how good a player is. But when it comes to players off halfback, when it comes to decision makers, when it comes to a player with exquisite skills that are not just taking safe kicks, but are changing the dynamic of a game, both from a rebounding and a forward 50 entries, pound for pound, There's not too many better halfbacks in the league than Dan Houston. What this player can do by skill, by decision, and by the way he reads and sets up the play for his teammates, this is as good a halfback as we've got in the AFL. And I think that's why, for me, let's look at what this means for Collingwood, is they have landed themselves, while not at a cheap price point, They have landed themselves an elite ball user that now sits for them beautifully across halfback. This side so often required the strong ball use to set up their forward 50 entries and their rebounding off D50 really politely off a couple of good ball users. Largely the run and carry and transition work rate of a Nick Dacos, and then to a lesser extent, the old dogs of Dacos. Well, he's not an old dog, but his older brother in Dacos, and then the likes of Sidebottom and Pendlebury. Really, it's been these three or four players that if they haven't got the ball by foot, there's a little bit, just a little bit of kamikaze ball work. What Dan Houston does into this side immediately is it structures up their half-back line beautifully. Now, they still need to address that key position post that was unfortunately being left by Murphy's concussion retirement. They've got a couple of guys that have been bit players to fill it, but polite, they've never really filled that in strength. But that back line changed drastically, not just with Murphy's retirement, but with also the necessity and desire to move Nick Dacos into more of an inside midfield role to become a clearance and stoppage specialist and not just a rebounder and a handball receive style of player only that was their playmaker. What Houston into this back line does is it immediately bolsters the loss that they felt with Dacos into the midfield with Houston now as a prime ball user across halfback. It means players like Quaynor can get back to playing at his strong point and enables the likes of Crisp and Moore amongst others just to get back to a little bit more semblance of premiership structure that they had without replacing Murphy to the fullest potential. They've now got at least a ball-using replacement that now is enabling the support of the 
deepening and the improvement of their midfield by allowing Dacos to move there. So this, from an overall totality perspective, is awesome for them, let alone what I think it means for like a Perryman, who's now got to be across this midfield core unit. So for me, it means guys like Perryman, Crisp or Pendlebury that could have gone into this halfback space to allow Dacos to stay in the midfield. Well, now Houston takes that spot. And overall, with some health for Dugowie and for Mitchell, now this midfield unit is back to its premiership best and the half-back line run, carry, and elite ball use is settled. This is a huge, huge pickup for Collingwood. Again, structurally, I still feel like they're a little weaker in their defensive six on the tolls and the lockdown side to free up more to intercept. But this is as good as a, a play move that they could make. I really, really like this for Collingwood. What does it mean for Port Adelaide? They've got some nice pieces back. Let, and we'll talk about those in other episodes, but it's a loss without any way of shaking this. You don't lose a multiple-time All-Australian player. And, and with the pieces they've got back into this side through the trade, as handy and as helpful as they'll be both now and in the future for the club, Gosh, this this one hurts a little bit. You're letting arguably the best player that's moving clubs this trade period leave your club. And again, the pieces they've got back are, are, are fine. I, I don't think it's a bad trade necessarily. But in terms of pound-for-pound pound player, ooh, the, filling in this one spot does feel like it's going to – you hope to recoup what you've lost with Houston – with the aggregate of what you've done with the rest of your side is probably where Port Adelaide and their list management and their fans are hoping to get to. Who are the guys that are going to sit in this spot? Well, we saw in the finals, at least for one of them, the team was happy to move a Jace Burgoyne back into this halfback spot. And I think if that happens, it's probably as good as anyone on their list that can at least protect that loss a little bit. I really like Burgoyne. He's got a little bit more speed, um, a little bit more evasiveness. Um, It's a different dynamic to Houston. Um, I think there could be something quite handy there. Does Kane Farrell take on a little bit more responsibility, although already playing in that back unit? Does he take on more core ball movement? Or an Evans, who we've seen back there as well, does he take it on? Or, or any of the other players that you know potentially are looking at, to draft something to sit in that spot? Does a Josh Sin eventually find his space? I don't think it's for him, but I think Burgoyne's probably one of the leading candidates to sit in there. And and I think from a fantasy perspective, uh, we can talk about Dan in a second. I think that's the one that should he end up getting this distribution space off halfback. Port Adelaide are a high possession, high ball control team. So lots of uncontested marks, lots of, lots of possessions, lots of easy ball movement. Burgoyne could be the one that really does give us a little bit of significant uptick for Port Adelaide and for fantasy coaches. Someone is going to pick up Dan Houston's scoring option. And I think that player, whoever they are that sits in this halfback spot, does become a prime option to me. So I do quite like Jace Burgoyne. To me, he feels like the natural option to sit straight in there. Although do do not discount Evans as a player that could sit into that spot. I'm not sure Farrell's their go-to guy where they flip that switch a little bit and play more through him. I think they found a really nice role for him. I think it is more likely to be Burgoyne, but Evans is the smoky that could probably sit in that spot. So for me, Burgoyne's the mid to latter part of your draft that I'd be interested in. In classic, I'd probably much rather trade into it once I've seen a game or two and jump on him before his price fully rockets out rather than start him. But we don't have to make that decision just yet. My goodness me, it's October. We don't need to lock ourselves in or out of a player just yet. For Dan Houston, he's been a relevant premium for a number of years for us. Um, He's gone back-to-back super coach averages of 100 plus 106, was ranked seventh amongst all defenders this year by average. He was 11th in AFL fantasy. And over the past three years in that format, he's kind of ranged from 92 to 94 average. I think the best we could hope for is basically more cowbell and, and a continuation of that scoring. Um, 
that's probably as good as it gets for me. Noble out, Houston in. Feels like a, a really good improvement for Collingwood in terms of player. It's a really nice upgrade. Um, they're, they're comparable handball receives, those two plays in, in Collingwood's system and Port Adelaide's system. So um, maybe not a huge scoring bump. I, I can't really forecast the pathway to that. Does it impact Dacos? That that might be an interesting conversation to have in the preseason in terms of primary ball movement and primary ball user. Now he's not the only guy they go through. But to me, I think Houston's going to be around the markings of, of where he's at. A Collingwood coach on a draft league might pick him a little bit ahead of others. Some might be a little bit more conservative that a less heavy possession and ball control game style at Collingwood in contrast to Port Adelaide might see him regress a little bit. And that's that to me is the most likely of the outcomes of him maintaining, increasing or decreasing his average. Uh, to me, a slight regression feels like the most likely outcome, but still to, to put him in the top 15 defenders across the format to me, does feel like the right space for Dan Houston. But but what's your take? How big of a win is this for Collingwood? For Port, in the aggregate, with all the assets they've now got out of this move, do they come out on top? And for fantasy footy, is this positive outcome for us, not just with Dan, but the supplementary moves and players that get impacted by this? Uh, comment below if you're watching this on YouTube and let me know what you think this means for us in fantasy footy in 2025. If you want to join the conversation across your audio podcasts, uh, you can do that through our social media, TikTok, Instagram, X, and Facebook. All the links for those you can find in the description of this episode, as well as where you can join our Patreon supporter group and get access to the coaches panel merchandise, Hat, um, hats, hoodies, notebooks, custom tees, a bunch of other stuff, beanies, the works, it is all there, all the details for getting your hands on some of that merch in the description of this episode. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed this series so far. We can't wait to be back with you again real soon talking about another player, uh, another player that's moved clubs this trade and free agency period.